Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. I don't think that we do a uh, sufficient job of truly appreciating people just for the qualities of their character. Today, I want to give thanks to a forever friend who uh, I only met mm, maybe seven years ago and who... I have essentially not seen in the last six years, almost five and a half years. We we didn't have a long time of overlap. Uh, And even when we had that time of overlap, we weren't, uh, we didn't spend uh, a lot of time together, just the two of us. But I do very clearly and strongly Uh, feel a deep sense of gratitude to God for bringing this fella into my life. And it's precisely because he just carried himself and treated people in such a way that you sort of shared the experience of peace and calm. His name is Dr. John Tweedale. And Dr. Tweedale is a professor at Reformation Bible College, where I used to teach. And he came and joined the faculty there not long before I left the faculty there. But there was some overlap. Now, John is not the guy who, um, I don't know, he's not the guy who's going to Uh, lead the team in uh, a rousing cheer in order to win the big game. He's not the guy that's uh, the life of the party. He's not overly shy. He's not even overly quiet. He's He's just calm. He's just peaceful. And... When you have conversation with Dr. Tweedale, you discover that that calm and that peace is rooted and grounded in precisely what it should be rooted and grounded in, which is his faith in Jesus. This is a man who walks in peace because he walks with the Prince of Peace. And because of that, peace flows through him to others. I got to know him in a time of pretty significant uh, turmoil and hardship in my life. And he had this just uncanny ability to inquire as to my well-being in a way that communicated to me the genuineness of his concern and not in the least bit uh, an interest in uh, gossip or uh, any kind of uh, harm being sent my way. I mean, I, I do and have for much of my life struggled with uh, people wanting, feeling like people uh, who want to get to know me are doing so with ulterior Uh, motives, but not so with Dr. Tweeddale. Uh, He's not a climber. He's not a, a, uh, an aspirer, a a kingdom builder. I mean, yes, he's building the kingdom of Christ, but he's doing it the way Jesus would have us all to do it with a gentle and quiet spirit. That's what I got to take part in. He would come in, he would pray for me. He would ask after me. He would smile 
at me. I don't know whether he's older than me or younger than me. He's probably younger than me. I, I have a tendency to think I'm younger than I am. He's probably younger than me. And yet, there was something so pastoral about him. And he, by the way, did serve as a pastor uh, before joining the faculty at, at uh, Reformation Bible College. He serves as a pastor in Pittsburgh. Maybe that has something to do with what made it, makes him such a great guy. Uh, he, he's just, he's got that pastoral spirit, that gentle spirit. Now, he's not weak. He's not uh, afraid to stand for uh, important truths. In fact, he's quite brave. And, uh, and, and, and the reason for that, again, I believe, is because of the peace he has in Christ. You know, I, I, it is not an easy thing for me that I don't teach at Reformation Bible College. But I am so grateful to know that he is there. I am hopeful for the students at Reformation Bible College that they are well cared for and they have a good role model in Dr. Tweeddale. Maybe that's something else for you to consider, not just contacting friends, maybe contact some teachers or some pastors that you've had in the past and tell them how they've impacted you and how you've been grateful to them. John Tweedale is a good and fine man. He is a sinner like the rest of us, saved by grace, who, because he knows he is a sinner saved by grace, manifests and shows grace to the rest of us sinners. John, I miss you, but I do give thanks for you. Should Christians pay their taxes? Of course they should. There's no question that they should. Jesus commands us to pay our taxes. Now, some people object because the taxes that we pay are used to finance wicked behavior. I understand that concern. But the reality is our responsibility is to pay our taxes. And when those taxes are spent on wicked things, it's the responsibility of the ones spending it, not the ones paying it. We don't go along with the money. When we hand the money over, it's no longer ours. It belongs to the government. So you don't need to be afraid on that end. That said, it is wrong for the government to collect taxes, to pay for things that God has not called the government to do. One of the reasons we have such a societal mess is that we have a government which thinks of itself as God, that thinks that it has an obligation to provide for all of us, that it has ownership of all that is ours. Government is a God-ordained institution. It begins in Genesis 9, when God says to Noah that if a man sheds a man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. That's the establishment of civil government. In Romans chapter 13, Paul says that the government is God's minister of justice, that God has given the government a sword, that they are there to punish evildoers. But that's a pretty small job, a relatively small job compared to what our government does. Our government decides what medication we have to take. Our government decides how much we can pay someone to work for us. Our government decides how much of our money we're allowed to keep. Our government decides what countries we're going to go wage war in all sorts of things that have nothing to do with its calling, not the least of which, by the way, and probably one of the most expensive, is the government, the Bible nowhere gives the government the power or the authority to be engaged in the educating of the children of its citizens. So, 
So, should we still pay taxes? Yes. Can we object to these taxes? Yes. I cannot tell you how many times I have raised the concern, hey, the government should not be taxing us for this. It, it, it could be a biblical perspective. It could be a constitutional perspective. The Tenth Amendment to the Constitution says plainly and unambiguously that if it's not a power listed inside the Constitution, then it's none of the federal government's business. What does the Constitution say about the responsibility of the federal government with respect to education? Nothing. What does it say about the federal government's responsibility with respect to agriculture? Nothing. What does it have to say about the federal government's responsibility with respect to energy? Nothing. Which means, by the way, the Secretary or the Department of Education, the Department of Energy, the Department of Agriculture are all unconstitutional departments. They have no business legally existing, nor do they biblically have a uh, legitimate reason for existing. And when I point that out and grumble and complain about the taxes, people jump up and say, oh, but Jesus says to pay your taxes. Of course he does. I'm not disputing whether or not I have a duty to pay the taxes, but my duty to pay taxes does not equate to an infinite invitation for the tax collector to collect from me. Think of it this way. Jesus says, if a man slaps you across the face, you are to turn the other cheek. Okay. Does that mean that if a man slaps me across the face and I turn the other cheek and I get slapped a second time and I say, you shouldn't be slapping me, that I'm wrong? I can object to the first slap and turn my cheek. I can object to illegitimate taxes and pay those taxes. It is tax day in America. Of course, every day is tax day in America. Today is that day when uh, those who have been less than uh, giving toward the federal government throughout last year have to write another check. And those who've been overly giving and lending the money government at 0% interest get a check back. I want us, I think we should pay our taxes, but I think our taxes should reflect the calling of the government to protect life and property from aggressors, foreign and domestic. Not to police the world, not to tell us whether or not we can have a big gulp from 7 Eleven. We would do well and we would be blessed if God would be pleased to coax Leviathan back into its constitutional cage. And we would be well to remember today on this day of pain in paying those taxes. Don't lose sight of that pain and forget, but continue to object to the overblown scope and size of the United States federal government. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsprouljr.com. And join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.